Hello, good afternoon. I'm here to play with an algebraic equation, so let's have some fun. I don't know whether this expression is a quadratic, but I can see a degree of 2. But does it mean that this is a quadratic function? Well, to find out, let us expand all the brackets from left to right. This is going to stay constant. If you square the first term, you're going to obtain 4. Square the second term, you're going to obtain positive x squared. Then 2 times the first term times the second term. 2 times this is 4 times this, we're going to obtain 4 x. This is equal to, to the right hand side, we have 1 plus 2 in the bracket of this. The same thing, we do the same thing. First term squared is 1. Second term squared is positive x squared. 2 times 1 is 2 times negative x is negative 2x. We are done with the first step. What we are going to do next is to open this bracket from left to right again. We are going to distribute x squared throughout the terms in the bracket, but I will start with this x squared, which has the highest degree. x squared times x squared is going to give us x to the power of 4 from loss of indices. Then I will go to the other one. x squared times negative 4x is going to give us negative 4x to the power of 30. Then x squared times 4 is going to give us 4 x to the power of 2. Now we move to the right hand side. We are going to distribute 2 throughout all the other terms in this bracket. Now what we are going to do next is to bring all the terms from the right hand side to the left hand side, leaving only 0 to the right hand side. So this is x to the power of 4. We don't have any x to the power of 4 to the other side, so we bring the next term, 4x to the power of 3. We don't have any index of 3, plus 4x to the power of 2, but we have another one here. Once a term crosses the equality sign, whatever sign is attached to that term will change to its opposite. So from positive to negative, 2x to the power of 2. Then we bring this term, it is negative, it will turn to positive plus 4x. But this is 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3, positive. If we bring it to the left hand side, it becomes negative 3. And to the right hand side, we have nothing. Let us further simplify. This is x to the power of 4 minus 4x to the power of 3 plus this minus this is 2, x to the power of 2, plus 4x minus 3. This is equal to 0. So now we have our equation, which is a polynomial of degree 4. There are a couple of ways in which you can solve this, but for me, I prefer to factorize it. But we have a constant of negative 3. In order to have a suitable factors, we are going to transform some of this term in such a way that they will have a coefficient of 3. So let's begin. This is equal to x to the power of 4, but this is negative 4x to the power of 3. I can transform this term into negative 3x to the power of 3, negative x to the power of 3, plus. This is 2x to the power of 2. I can transform it into 3x squared minus x squared. These two terms are the same with this term. Then plus. This is 4x. 4x can be written as 3x plus x. They are the same. So the last term which is negative 3 equals 0. Alright, now what we are going to do is to factorize in batches. First two, second two, and so on and so forth. I'm going to factor out this x to the power of 3, x to the power of 3. Now in the bracket, I will have only x from the first term. 
and from the second term I will have negative 3. I'm done with this first two, then the second two. I'm going to factor out negative x squared. Negative x squared out. Then inside, what I have left here is just x. The minus 3. Then the other two, I will factor out negative x. Then in the bracket here, I will have x. And to the other term, I will have negative 3. Plus, what I have here is just x minus 3. And the whole of this equal to 0. We are moving. If you look at these terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, they all have x minus 3 in common. So I can factor it out again. So x minus 3 out my parenthesis from the first term I will have x to the power of 3 to the second term I will have negative x squared third term I will have negative x and here I will have only 1 so plus 1 we have our first factor we are going to factorize this again Okay, sorry, the whole of this is equal to 0. This is x minus 3. I can factor x squared. Then in the bracket, I will have x here from the first term. Then from the second term, I will have only negative 1. Then minus 1 in the bracket of x minus 1. Because if we expand this bracket, you are still going to obtain these two terms. All right, again, we have x minus 1 in common between these two terms. What I will do, I will factor it out. This is x minus 3. It is there waiting for us. Then in the bracket, I will have x minus 1. Then times in x squared minus 1. The whole of this equal to 0. This is also equal to zero so what we are going to do next is to set each of these factors to be equal to zero the first factor is x minus three equal to zero this implies that x will be equal to positive three then the second factor which is x minus one equals to zero this implies that x is equal to positive one then the last factor the last factor is x squared minus 1 equals to 0. Uh, this implies that x squared will be equal to positive 1. And uh, x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1. x will now be equal to plus or minus 1 because the square root of 1 is still 1. Now we have obtained all the necessary real solutions. So we can now conclude by saying therefore x is now equal to uh, 3, 1, and uh, negative 1. Here we have positive and negative 1, but we already have positive 1, so we can write one value. It's enough. So these are the real values of x in this equation. And each real value you test here, it is going to satisfy this equation. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next tutorial, which is going to be an integral calculus.